So let us start our discussion on metallization. In the last class we have already discussed on the problems and failure mechanisms of VLSI metallizations and how those problems are removed and what are the remedies for solving the uh, failure mechanisms in particular electromigration and junction spiking. Today we will discuss another area of metallization of VLSI that is silicides. Silicides are metallic compounds which forms with solid phase reaction with silicon and metal films and they are highly stable up to higher temperature and that temperature extends up to 1000 degree centigrade which is not at all possible in case of metal film, metal film with metallization with aluminum or any other film. And low resistivity is another important criteria of silicides and low resisti resistivity and high thermal stability makes these particular material, I mean silicides, a suitable alternative for VLSI metallization. And another interesting property of the silicide metallization is self-alignment. If you want to make silicide contact, either in case of moss, either source and drain or on the gate region, then you may not require this photoelectrography step, photoelectrography uh, or mask alignment technique. Directly you can go ahead the alignment and formation of the silicides. That is one of the attracting advantage of silicide. And I will discuss how without any masking you can form the silicide in your desired areas in a separate slide with figure. And this is very important self alignment you know because alignment requires some additional space for tolerance. So if you skip that particular alignment step then those tolerances you do not have to give. So that means you can make the devices or the circuits in a smaller area and density of the components in that chip you may increase. So that is why the self alignment techniques are used nowadays frequently in many advanced bipolar process or advanced CMOS process. Self aligned silicide has got another name and that is known as salicide. Okay? Now similar to silicides another name is also coming in the literature and that is known as polycide. Polycide is the condensed name for polysilicon silicide. Silicide is formed with silicon and metal reaction but polycide is formed with polysilicon and metal reaction and their reaction is solid phase reaction. And this particular reaction takes place at a temperature and that temperature ranges from 700 degree centigrade to 1000 degree centigrade. 
So, at high temperature metal and silicon or polysilicon reacts to form either silicide or polysilicide. Polysilicide is widely used in gate structure of MOS devices and that is the polysilicide gate. You may heard the name of silicon gate. Silicon gate is basically polysilicon gate. In the gate region of MOS, you first form oxide, silicon dioxide, thin layer of silicon dioxide and then you, you just deposit polysilicon which is doped polysilicon obviously and sometimes replacing that polysilicon one can use polysilicon that is also a dope, similar to doped polysilicon but its conductivity is higher than that of polysilicon. A well designed polysilicon gate can achieve a gate seed resistance which is less than 10 ohm per square compared to that for polysilicon which is of the order of 40 ohm per square or more. So, here is the advantage of polysilicon gate. Most commonly used polysilicons are tungsten silicide, tungsten polysilicon or tantalum polysilicon or molybdenum polysilicon as they are thermally stable and resistant for <coughs> processing chemicals. They are highly resistant to processing chemicals means some of the acids, some of the organic chemicals, some of the gases. They do not react with them, they are highly stable with temperature and they are highly stable with uh, chemicals also. So, that is why they are very much popular in present VLSI process. Now, silicide material property requirements for VLSI. What should be the property of the silicide so that it can be faithfully used in a VLSI process? That let us discuss the points. Those points are low electrical resistivity, that is one of the point which is required in metallization. Resistivity should be low, that means conductivity should be high. Stable contact formation to aluminum metallization, the contact should be highly stable. Ease of formation, that means easily you can form the, the uh, silicide or polysilicate film. Fine line pattern transfer, so that for interconnect, interconnection or even contact formation, you have to pattern it small area or thin lines, so that you can increase the density of the devices or components in chip. So, that is another requirement. Next is excellent adhesion and low stress. The adhesion of the silicide film on oxide or contact should be good, very good and <laughs> stress should be as minimum as possible, otherwise helix will be formed and you have seen the if the uh, stress formed, so it will be deformed. Okay. Next is controlled oxidation properties and stability in oxygen ambient. This is another important property which has to be maintained by the silicide. Silicide films must not be oxidized very easily. That means, the in oxygen ambient, it should be inert, means it will not react with oxygen and form oxide because your ambient condition or environment always atmosphere is having oxygen. So, it should not react with that oxygen and form oxide. Good electro migration resistance, that is one failure mechanism and it should satisfy that condition also. Good electro migration resistance, ohmic and low contact resistance, contact should be ohmic in nature and contact resistance should be as minimum as possible. Stability throughout subsequent high temperature processing including ion implant and diffusion. Diffusion and ion implant, ion implant means after ion implantation the annealing step that is high temperature, annealing, ion implantation itself is not high temperature step. So, they must be stable we, at that temperatures. Smooth surface features because 
feature size is going down day by day. If density want to increase, then surface finish or surface feature should be very smooth. Good corrosion resistance, it should not be corroded easily. So these are the important properties which must have before the silicide is selected for VLSI. Okay. So now we will discuss on the formation, how the silicides are formed. Okay. There are several techniques by which silicide film is formed and one technique is direct metallurgical reaction. So there M is the metal and SI is the silicon and X molecule of silicon reacts with M, M molecule uh, uh, say single metal atom and it form M SI X okay, at temperature ranging from say 500 to 1000 degree centigrade. At that temperature M stands for metal and it will form M SI X that is the silicide. If the M is titanium then it is titanium silicide. If M is cobalt then it is a cobalt silicide, then it is M is tungsten then it is tungsten silicide like that. So metal is deposited by evaporation, sputtering or CVD technique. The advantage of the direct metallization reaction is both polyside and silicide structure can be formed and selective edge possible. If, you, if it is not etched selectively, then you cannot get self alignment. That is one of the important condition, so that self alignment process you can use in using silicide. Okay. And disadvantage of this particular reaction mechanism is that the molecular ratio of metal to silicon depends on phase form which silicide is formed. Silicide had got different phases. For example, in case of titanium silicide, the TiSi2 has lowest resistance that is titanium disilicide. It may form TiSi, Ti2Si like that. That means metal and silicon molar ratio may be different. It depends on which phase it formed. There are different phases of silicide. Out of that, some phases has got lowest resistivity and that is used for metallization purpose. And in this context, let me mention, let, uh, let us mention that uh, other than this is metallic silicide, other than metallic silicide, there is another class of silicide that is known as semiconducting silicide. Some of the silicides are available in a particular phase, they, their resistivity is high and they behave just like a semiconductor. For example, beta phase of iron silicide, beta Fe Si2, iron silicide is Fe Si2 and beta phase and that silicide has got semiconducting properties. On the other hand, the titanium silicide and cobalt silicide etc or tungsten silicide, molybdenum silicide, they are metallic silicide. That means their resistivity is too low, conductivity is high. And again different phases are there and different phases has got different resistivity and you have to select, you have to prepare that particular phase which gives you lowest resistivity. Okay. And next uh, uh, a technique is co-evaporation from an independent silicon and metal source. Co-evaporation technique, the second technique of silicide formation. And in this particular case, the advantage is smooth surface compared to earlier method, centering environment not as critical. That is also a point because if centering environment is critical, then instead of forming silicide, it may be oxidized or it may be nitride. The environment, that means the reaction environment, the chamber where reaction takes place, if that chamber there is a stresses of other gases like oxygen or nitrogen, it reacts easily with those gases, then instead of forming metallic silicide, some 
complex oxide may form. So, that rest, uh, its resistivity may be higher. Disadvantage is metal silicon molar ratio control difficult, but possible. No selective edge possible in this particular case, poor step coverage. These are the problems of second method, which is co evaporation from an independent silicon and metal source. Okay. Now, we will discuss the third method. Third method is co sputtering from an independent silicon and metal target, co sputtering. So, there advantage co sputtering means already you know sputtering technique co sputtering means simultaneously the different source you are sputtering the metal as well as silicon so they deposited in a mixture form on the substrate and then you can sinter it and it will form silicide here good control of metal silicon molar ratio smooth films Sintering environment not as critical, deposition of sandwich possible. These are the advantages of co sputtering from an independent silicon and metal targets. Disadvantage of this technique is difficult calibration to achieve. Metal silicon molar ratio control. Okay. These are the disadvantage and disadvantages of this third method. Now, let us go for the fourth method that is sputtering from a composite MSIX target. Here basically you are not preparing silicide by raising the temperature. The target itself is a silicide target just like metal evaporation, metal deposition in sputtering technique. Similarly, the target you use a silicide target and you can deposit the silicide film on the substrate. Okay, just sputtering technique as you do use in case of metallization metals. So, their advantage is excellent M SI ratio that means metal to silicon molar ratio. You can control in a good manner if correct target is chosen. That means, in already in the target, this M SI ratio is maintained. The same thing you are depositing by sputtering method. So, always it will be maintained there, good step coverage. Disadvantage contamination from target. And the fifth method is chemical vapor deposition or CVD technique. There is a fifth one. And this CVD may be atmospheric, may be low pressure or plasma enhanced CVD. Here advantage is high throughput, excellent step coverage and disadvantage rough surface, metal silicon molar ratio control difficult but possible and poor adhesion. These are the disadvantage of fifth method which is chemical vapor deposition. So, out of these five techniques, we use normally the first technique, first one and their metal film may be deposited by evaporation or by sputtering and silicon as a base material in case of silicide, in case of polycide we deposit polysilicon and then you deposit metal and then you sinter it at a temperature within 500 to 1000 degree centigrade. Okay. So, these are the methods. Now, I will discuss what is self aligned silicide process. So, here uh, you can see the diagram, this is basically a diagram for making moss. So, there is a substrate and this is the active region, this is the isolation region, this is a thicker oxide and this is the gate oxide basically, thin oxide, gate oxide and now by lithographic patterning you open window in the source and drain region. 
Then on oxide, this is silicon dioxide, thin gate oxide, you deposit polysilicon, then pattern polysilicon, okay? then you deposit silicon nitride, then the whole thing is oxidized, so that on silicon nitride oxidation will not be done, but at the side wall oxidation will be done, the side wall oxide. This side because this is polysilicon, it will be oxidized this is polysilicon, it will be oxidized, okay? This polysilicon will be oxidized, but top oxidation prevented by depositing a nitride layer there. After that, the nitride layer is removed, okay? Now, this is polysilicon and this is oxide. After removal of the silicon nitride layer on the gate region, so, in the top region of the gate is exposed to polysilicon, this is polysilicon and here is a side wall oxide. Now, then you deposit metal film here, you deposit metal film, now you sinter. If you sinter it at a high temperature, means you annul it, then wherever the metal will come across with silicon, it will react and silicide will be formed or where it will come across with polysilicon, then it will react and then polyside will form. But the region where the metal film is deposited on oxide, then there no, no reaction will take place. For example, this region and this region, this is oxide and oxide and metal, there will be no reaction. But the source and drain region, for example, here and here, the metal will come across with silicon, then here silicide contact will be formed. But in the gate region, what is there? In the gate region, you see here, this particular region, polysilicon and metal, they will react and polyside will form. And this edge, that means one side, this side of the gate and other side of the gate, this is side wall oxide, there also silicide will not be formed because this is oxide oxide or not react with metal, so silicide will not form. So, after sintering the structure, then you have to go for selective removal of the metal. So, unreacted metal from oxide on the top of the oxide and here, this is also unreacted metal film on the top of oxide, they are removed by etching solution. And after that, what will be there? Whatever silicide is there, that will not react with the metal because the unreacted metal can be removed by metal etching solution. But wherever silicide is formed, so that silicide cannot be dissolved by that metal etching solution, isn't it? Because silicide is a different material. So at this particular position, silicide will not be reacted, here it will not react and this particular region the polyside will form and that will not react with metal etching solution. So, from oxide this region, oxide is this region and the, the isolation region is here and here and on that top metal is removed. So, here you can see silicide or polyside has been formed and that is l -palamine. We are not using any mask aligner for getting the film, silicide film either here, here or here. Normally, in case of metallization, we do it. We deposit, for example, aluminum over the entire surface, then we use some mask, then we do the lithography and we do the selective etching of metal, but here we have not used anything. Any mask we have not used, no mask, we have not used any mask aligner. So that you can avoid here, lithography, photo masking step. Directly, you can get silicide in the desired portion. That means wherever the silicon or polysilicon is exposed, their silicide will form. On the oxide region, no silicide. Metal will remain so and you can remove that metal. Okay. So now, uh, among the refractory metal silicides, titanium and cobalt are two important material for refractory metal silicides because of certain advantage of titanium and cobalt silicides. And those advantages are mentioned and their properties are, are compared in this table. So, TiSi2, titanium disilicide and COSi2, cobalt disilicide. 
So these are among the different phases of titanium silicide, TiSi2 has got lowest resistance. Similarly, in different phases of cobalt silicide, COSi2 has got lowest phase, lowest resistance, lowest seed resistance or lowest resistivity. So if you compare these two, titanium silicide thickness depends on titanium film thickness, temperature and reaction time. In case of cobalt silicide, silicide thickness depends on cobalt film thickness only. Thermal silicidation is much sensitive to oxygen, cobalt, uh, sorry carbon, this is carbon and nitrogen present in the annealing gas ambient in case of titanium. But in case of cobalt silicide preparation, thermal silicidation is not much sensitive to annealing gas ambient. It is a very important advantage of cobalt silicide. It does not react with, react much with the ambient gases. It's not sensitive to ambient gases. And third difference in case of titanium silicide is, it can easily penetrate thin native oxide, whereas cobalt silicide cannot penetrate thin native oxide, which may be formed at the interface of silicon and metal film. That is good part of titanium silicide and bad part of cobalt silicide because the interface always there may be some native oxide of 2 to 3 angstrom. So that native oxide titanium silicide can easily penetrate and form the silicide but in case of cobalt there is a lot of problem this if the native oxide thickness is little bit more so that cobalt film cannot penetrate through this puncture the native oxide and if, if it cannot puncture the cobalt metal cannot come in contact with silicon so automatically no reaction and then what will happen? Silicide will not form. That means if you compare, the second one is the advantage of titanium silicide and the third one is, sorry, second one is a disadvantage of a titanium silicide and advantage for cobalt silicide. But third one is advantage for titanium but disadvantage for cobalt silicide. Both silicides are popular. So out of the titanium and cobalt, titanium silicide has got much application in VLSI metallization. And now I will uh, tell you how this titanium silicide is prepared. There are two techniques, one is conventional process, another is known as pre-amorphization implant process, PI process. And the preparation techniques are narrated here. So first you deposit titanium film on wafer, then you go for annealing that is rapid thermal annealing 650 degree centigrade 30 second in nitrogen ambient RTA means high temperature low time. So in this particular annealing sequence in a conventional process TISI2 there are two phases one is C49 another is C54. So here uh, C49 phase will be formed and some of the TI2SI or TISI phase also will be formed. And C49 phase of titanium silicide is not lowest resistivity silicide. So then what we has to be done, so what is the unreactive titanium is there, so that titanium has to be removed. And since you are making the RTA nitrogen ambient, there is a chance of formation little bit titanium nitride. So the titanium nitride and titanium is etched out but whatever the silicide has formed, it may be C49 phase or it may be TISI phase. So that will remain, that will not react with the etching solution of titanium and titanium nitride. So after the unreacted titanium and titanium nitride is etched out, then the sample is again sintered at a temperature of 800 degrees centigrade and 10 second in argon ambient, it is inert ambient and the second RTA will transform the C49 phase of titanium silicide to C54 phase and C54 phase of titanium silicide has got lowest seat resistivity, a lowest seat resistance or lowest resistivity, okay. So this is 
uh, the conventional process. But in the second column, it is known as pi process. Here, only the first step is different. The rest of the steps are same. If you compare, so in the first step, what we do, silicon is pre-amorphized by arsenic implant. So arsenic is a heavy atom. If you implant silicon with arsenic atom, then it is pre-amorphization layer will be formed. And then if you deposit titanium, then reaction will be completed and seed resistance further goes down and surface finish is smoother than the conventional process. This is one improved version of titanium silicide formation which is known as pi process, pre-amorphization implant process. We first silicon layer is amorphized, then you deposit titanium, then other reaction, other sintering is being done step by step, all the process. Here you can get smooth surface finish, lower resistivity titanium silicides. Okay? Now, in the last topic in metallization chapter is new conductor materials that is copper metallization. That is a very interesting area and recently people are trying to have copper metallization in VLSI process. But for a long time it has not been done because of certain problem. And those problem we address, why people are people looking for copper? One of the reason is copper has a higher conductivity than aluminium. Aluminium was very popular because of certain advantages what we have already mentioned. But one of the problem is aluminium is the RC delay and IR drop. Since the conductivity of aluminium is higher, uh, is lower than the copper. Lowest conduct, conductivity materials are copper, gold and silver. These are the lowest conduct, uh, sorry, higher conductivity material than aluminium. Isn't it? So, in spite of that aluminium were used because of certain advantages, but if we consider the high speed VLSI circuits, then the resistance offered by the conducting lines is important factor. That is the total resistance R is important. And in multi-level metallization environment, there are so many layers of dielectric film. In between different metal layers, thin dielectrics are there, they will uh, introduce some capacitances, parasitic capacitances. So, as a result of which, R and C delay is going to increase. That is a major concern in high speed VLSI. And if the resistance increases, so there will be a potential drop, the resistance of the metal interconnect lines is more, so obviously some potential drop will be there. And because of that, the another problem is coming, you cannot drive with high current. It loses the high current carrying capability and if you if it cannot drive with high current, then if, if you try, then electromigration problem will come. If current density is more than 10 to the power 6 ampere per centimeter square, the electromigration problem will come. These are the problem of VLSI and ULSI devices, not in normal, normal low frequency or medium complexity VLSI. Now, copper having higher conductivity than aluminum is currently investigating material for VLSI interconnect. Copper metallization can reduce the effective R by 20 to 30 percent because its conductivity is more than the conductivity of aluminum. So effective resistance of the interconnect lines and contact may reduce by 20 to 30 percent if you use copper. Copper atoms are heavier and more tightly bound together. So they resist electromigration better than aluminum. And we have seen in aluminum, if we mix little amount of copper, the, it, is, it is electromigration resistant. So that's why you use copper, uh, aluminum copper alloy instead of aluminum in order to have electromigration resistant layer. So that is one advantage. And if it is electromigration resistant, then it allows higher current which in terms improve the circuit speed. So for improving the circuit speed, higher current is another important consideration. Okay. Now these advantages of copper people are trying to exploit, but initially they failed because of certain problems. And what are the problems? Let us see in the next slide what are the problems. And this is also advantages. 
the problems are mentioned in the next slide. In the upper levels of metal or block to block routing, which is known as global interconnects, one can increase performance up to 50 percent by changing to copper. If aluminum is changed to copper, then performance improvement is by 50 percent. That is in case of global interconnect, which is known as, which is the top layer of metal metallization scheme, which connects from one block to other block. Okay. And another is the gold and silver is another high conductivity, heavier material than aluminum for interconnects. And they are started using and some research is going on on silver or gold metallization. But gold metallization has got problem you know is the addition is very poor. Always if you want to use gold you have to use some uh, helping material for good adherence. Much r and work is needed to make these new materials viable. So neither of these materials, copper or silver, has come into the process line of industry. It need more R&D work. Now I will mention the problems of copper metallization. Why for quite a long time it is not introduced in VLSI or ULSI metallization. The problems are, number one, copper diffuses very fast in both oxide and silica. If you do not block this diffusion, that means copper diffusion into oxide or silicon, copper atoms can reach silicon area and density and destroy devices by causing severe VT drift and junction leakage. That means it, through oxide copper diffuses and on silicon also copper diffuses. If it diffuses then what will happen in case of gate region? If copper metal diffuses through oxide and again it diffuses to the silicon, then threshold voltage adjustment is very difficult. It changes the threshold voltage VT and if it changes, then the performance of the circuit will be lost, will, will, be, will be deteriorating, is not it? And in case of source and drain, if you use copper metallization, they can introduce junction leakage current because the copper diffusion to silicon increases junction leakage. Another problem is it cannot be readily patterned using conventional subtractic plasma etching because of the lack of volatile halide byproducts. Dry etching of copper is very difficult because proper selective dry etch and gases is not available in case of copper. In Third problem is it is readily oxidized in air at low temperature. Even less than 200 degrees centigrade, it readily oxidizes and forms no self protecting layer to stop further oxidation. So, these are the key problems in copper metallization. It readily oxidized in presence of air at low temperature, even less than 200 degrees centigrade. That is a major problem. Now, Another problem is as copper diffuses through silicon dioxide, a barrier layer such as tantalum, tantalum nitride or silicon nitride is needed in order to prevent the diffusion. The most difficult obstacle, however, is vulnerability to corrosion because copper does not possess a tight self passivating oxide as does aluminum. It is prone to corrosion. It corrodes easily copper. Next problem is it requires adequate passivation layer to protect copper from corrosion, takes precious space and allow and lower the conductance per unit volume. Because if you need some passivation layer, so you required it required another space because passivation layer means you have to align and you have to take some tolerance spaces, etc., etc. That is advantage. Commercial application of this material to devices and VLSI interconnects has not yet begun because of this particular problems. Many problems are there, but people are trying their best to circumvent those problems with innovation because their, their 
very much anxious to use this material. They are very much interested to use this material so that these materials will have lot of potential in case of high speed VLSI devices. Okay. So, removing those problems, there is a solution, there are many solutions. Copper deposition is usually done by CVD technique and electroplating. Electroplated copper has been shown to have larger electromigration lifetime than CVD films. The two techniques of deposition, one is CVD, another is electroplating. Electroplating is better so far as electromigration resistance is concerned. Copper patterning is achieved by Damascene process, a new process, not normal lithography technique or dry etching. This patterning is achieved by Damascene process, which is that, what is that? Damascene process consists of copper deposition into preformed oxide trenches followed by copper CMP and CMP is known as chemical mechanical polish CMP. First you form the trench, then you deposit copper, then you remove by CMP which is chemical mechanical polishing. The combination of these two steps is known as Damascene process. Damascene process is the most feasible approach since it overcomes the poor dye etchability of copper. You do not require dry etching gases and systems. In using Damascene process, you can pattern the copper lines. Copper wiring for multi levels of interconnects and vias can be formed simultaneously with a dual Damascene process flow. So these are the technology innovations required for copper metallization. So you can imagine this, the copper metallization process is a complicated process and people are trying to remove the, uh, they are trying their best to remove the complication so that it can be used in process line, standard process line. Okay. I can show you how it is complicated the Damascene process in a diagram and this is shown here you can see. So this is a diagram of uh, this uh, dual Damascene based copper metallization scheme and you can see here the steps, different steps and this is the via plug and these are copper and is a separated this side from top and side walls are protected by some barrier layer, lot of barrier layer. So the interdiffusion of copper from this and via this will not be there. Okay. Now conclusions and future trends in metallization schemes. And there as the interconnect system becomes a factor in determining device performance and cost, the IC industry is undergoing changes and design methodology and process technology. Critical issues and possible solutions for future interconnects challenges include the following points. Namely, interconnect parameter now dominate nearly all aspects of IC performance such as delay, power dissipation, noise tolerance and electromigration. The requirement of higher packing density runs against the demands for higher speed. A trade-off has to be made between performance and cost. People are trying for that to make a trade-off between performance and cost. Next, interconnect issues are too important to be ignored in the early stage of IC design because you cannot ignore these metallization problems in the, at the beginning. Physical parameters should be used to set the constraint and guide the logic design process. Hierarchical interconnect layouts can extend current aluminum silicon dioxide technology to optimize density, performance and cost. The same concept will be needed for future material systems. 
copper metallization reduces wiring resistance but brings about a host of new challenges to process technology and radically changes manufacturing. Copper metallization is not necessarily simpler than aluminum. The manufacturing cost is primarily determined by the technology migration path. A major advantage of changing to copper technology appears to be the yield improvement and cost saving resulting from the reduction of metal levels. And the last one, the preferred technology development strategy is to introduce major changes one at a time, starting with easiest ones such as low K dielectric, then followed by copper. Implementing many changes at once involves too great a risk because we are aiming for RC lower, the C has to be lower and R, R has to be lower, RC delay. So lowering C requires low K dielectric and lowering R you require copper instead of aluminum. So if you attack the problem at the same time, low K dielectric and low uh, resistivity metal film, it will be a difficult problem. So better suggestion is attack one by one. So that is first low K dielectric, then the uh, low resistivity metal that is copper. So in both area, lot of research is going on nowadays and hopefully within uh, maybe few years, people will come with solutions of low K dielectric as well as low resistivity, means high conductivity metal films which is copper metalized. So here we can stop and conclude the metallization chapter. This instrument which you see now is, a, is known as ultra high vacuum system. In this particular unit, we can evaporate materials with the help of electron beam evaporation technique. Already we have seen a vacuum system, vacuum machine where by resistive heating film is deposited on the substrate. But here technique is different. We evaporate the material at high vacuum using some electron beam. And this is the chamber which is being evaporated. Inside the chamber, uh, the electron gun is there. At the same time, a heart is there. On the heart, we keep the materials and electron beam is incident on the material and locally some on some spot the material will be melted and it is evaporated and this particular unit with the help of this particular unit you can get a deposited film which is a very pure because this particular system does not use any pumps which require oil the pumps used in this machine are iron pump, which you can see here, triabsorption pump, which uses some uh, liquid nitrogen and titanium sublimation pump, which is here. So with the help of these two pumps, we can create vacuum inside the chamber of the order of 10 to the power minus 10 millimeter of mercury. And when the deposition is being done, that time the pressure will increase and it will be nearly 10 to the power 7 millimeter, 10 to the power, mi uh, 10 to the power minus 7 millimeter of mercury. So it is very low. And this is the control unit of that particular system where you can see the vacuum, also you can see the deposited film thickness. This particular unit is a very unique facility in the microelectronics lab of IIT Kharagpur, and this is being used for some research purpose. We can deposit refractory metals like tungsten, titanium, etc., on various kinds of substrate. And recently, some researchers have.
Thank you. 